guys welcome to my channel in today's video i'm going to be going over my lipedema diagnosis and there is a couple of topics that i'm going to be going through uh, obviously explaining what lipedema is um going through sort of like the symptoms the causes um whatnot and explaining my sort of like diagnosis story and then explaining about how it's gonna sort of like going forward uh, with my weight loss journey how it is gonna potentially change so it's gonna be a bit of an in-depth ramble so grab yourself a cup of tea as I have done and let's get started so what is lipedema I'm gonna read from um, a note on my phone because it's just probably the most effective way to articulate what lipedema is. The vast majority of doctors have never even heard of lipedema, a disease first identified in a 1940 Mayo Clinic report, and that is today commonly recognized and treated in Western Europe. But doctors still have little idea what causes it. Lipedema almost exclusively affects women, and it tends to appear during puberty and worse than during pregnancy and menopause, which hints that there's a hormonal component. It often runs in families, which is suggested, which suggests a genetic connection. But understanding exactly what is happening below the skin is surprisingly complicated. Lipedema is characterised by disproportionately large hips and legs and sometimes arms, with fatty deposits under the skin. As the, con as the condition progresses, it essentially deforms the body, piling on the pounds that diet and exercise can't touch. Even after bariatric surgery, for example, the upper body will be thin, almost starved looking, but with large fatty legs. A clue that the inability to lose the weight could be caused by lipedema is the fat itself, which is a different texture than the soft, squidgy flab of, say, love handles. Lipedema patients often have this fibrotic tissue, firm nodule like marbles or rocks in their fat. Lipedema fat cells also seem particularly rough on the body's metabolism. We know that all fat cells burn through calories more slowly than muscle tissue does, but lipedema fat, it seems, really stalls the calorie burn. The Mayo Clinic report, for instance, showed the resting energy expenditure is lower in women who have lipedema, and lipedema is a progressive disorder, meaning once it appears, it starts to pile on. As the fat tissue grows, it pushes on the nerves, plus there's lymphatic fluid that should be moving through the tissue, but it's not. Lymphatic fluid contains cell waste material and may become acidic when a person moves around or generates lactic acid. So there could be toxins in the fat tissue damaging the nearby nerves. And we know that even in healthy people, fat secretes damaging inflammatory substances. All three abnormalities contribute to the discomfort and the pain that lipedema cause. Even if a patient gets diagnosed, treatment can be difficult. Exercise, especially swimming and walking, help keep the lymphatic system moving. Compression garments discourage fluid buildup in the lower body, and a plant-rich diet heavily on heavy on antioxidants fights inflammation. But at the end of the day, lipedema is, by definition, a buildup of fat that lifestyle interventions can't alleviate. That leaves patients with one expensive but effective treatment, a special form of liposuction. So, that's basically, I know, a huge ramble about lipedema, but in essence, lipedema is a fat disorder that affects your limbs more often than not your legs, um, and in some cases, your arms as well. Um, it exclusively seems to affect women. However, there have been uh, recognized conditions in men. But, you know, what it comes down to is people with lipedema have a fat buildup that me their metabolism can't metabolize. So basically, uh, a buildup of fat that through no amount of exercise, no amount of diet, nothing that you can do, I can do to remove that fat from my body. Um, so signs, symptoms, and causes. So I, I guess sort of like the prob probably one of the most obvious signs of lipedema is a disproportion in the body. A lot of the time uh, a person with lipedema has much larger legs and much smaller upper body. Um, so for instance, for myself, the, my clothing size on my top is much different 
to my lower half and at my smallest ever weight I was a size 8 to 10 on my upper body and I was a size 16 to 18 on my lower body. Um, that's probably one of the most common signs or symptoms. Another one is the pain. So um, in earlier stages of lipedema, because there is, there's three stages and so many different like types to it, everybody's lipedema is different. Um, in the earlier stages there is not as much pain and it can sort of like um, get worse as the stages progress but it's different for everyone. But usually if you have lipedema your legs and obviously if you have it in your arms hurt to the touch and what I mean by this is I have a sausage dog who is literally the size of a loaf of bread and when she walks over my legs it literally feels like I'm being like stabbed multiple times over and over. Um, also the pain, the only way I can describe it is like growing pain. If you as a child suffered with that ache that you had in your legs. Um, most days I have that, uh, especially on night when I'm laid in bed. Uh, I used to think I had restless leg syndrome and now I know that it's lipedema. So it's basically feels like a, a dull ache that radiates from the bone and it can just affects one leg, both legs. I can feel it sort of like more sort of in my calf or my thigh or whatever. And then there's also, I'll get like a, like a kind of like stabbing, sort of like a very quick sort of electrical kind of sharp pain. Another symptom is uh, bruising. Like you seem to bruise so much. And I believe that has got something to do with uh, the pressure that is being put on your um, veins and capillaries and that kind of thing. It's, uh, that's why you tend to bruise easily if you have lipedema. Um, the cause is pretty unknown. Uh, as I've said, sort of like in what lipedema is, there is evidence to believe that it is a genetic condition that has that seems to sort of like progress or worsen with sort of like the female hormone. So when you hit puberty, whenever you go through a hormonal change in your life, so like pregnancy, menopause, it can also, stress is also a factor that seems to sort of like cause it to grow. Um, but unfortunately there hasn't been enough research to sort of like solidify that exact cause. Um, all they know is it's not it's it's not really the individual's fault that it happens because you know this lipedema has affected athletes it, it isn't necessarily from a place of someone that is overweight therefore that it's happened it can just happen um also another sort of like key sign of lipedema is that you are unable to lose the weight so for instance, you have sort of like chubby thighs, bigger legs, and you diet, you exercise, and you know, years and years and years go by, and you just can't lose the weight. That's uh, that's one sign of it also. So, my diagnosis journey or story, this is probably going to be the longest part of this video. I'll try and keep it as sort of precise as possible but it is a story so you know grab your tea and I'll explain. So as a child I was overweight quite chubby nothing sort of like major just you know that sort of like innocent childlike chub um, and when I got to the ages of probably between I want to say 11 and 13 my weight just bloomed. It was like a bomb went off overnight and I woke up and I was massive. Um, I was big all over at this point, but my legs were certainly the biggest sort of like 
part of my body and it was although i i did have uh quite a big upper body at that stage it was still i was still disproportionate and you know i remember getting trousers that were so 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 tight around my legs but pretty loose on my waist and that kind of thing so it definitely was i definitely had dis disproportion in size even though i was overweight all over my body um and that remains the case until the age of about 16 where i fell in love with sport and sort of started to sort of like look at my diet um more so because i was really sort of passionate about my sport and wanted to do better i wanted to be healthy and fit so i could obviously uh, go for longer and just be better at my sport really so between the ages of 16 and 19 i was very active and i became quite obsessed with nutrition uh i had the internet and that was at my disposal i would google sort of lots of things i'd watch lots of documentaries i'd read books about nutrition i would listen to ted talks about nutrition and just basically understood how the body worked with food how you become fat how you burn off fat you know what the body needs in terms of like proteins fats carbohydrates all that kind of thing um and i was very sort of like clued up with it i knew what i was talking about and i put all these things into practice and i lost a lot of weight i was very sort of like active like i said um and i did lose a lot of weight all from my torso and i did lose a little bit of weight from my legs but that for the most part they remained the same size um it was just seemed impossible no matter what i did they just wouldn't shrink <laughs> and also the pain was there the bruising was there all these other symptoms and elements that um as i sort of got older and realized they weren't normal it wasn't the norm to have your legs bruised or somebody touch you and it it'd be excruciatingly painful so i did what most people do googled these symptoms and what popped up was lipedema so the very first time i heard the word saw the word read the word was at 19 years old and yeah it was literally like I was reading something that I had written. It was so relevant to me and my life and what I was going through at that time. Um, so after that initial sort of like discovery of the condition, I thought, yeah, that sounds like exactly what I'm going through. Wow, that's exactly what it is. However, um, I wasn't, I wasn't confident enough to go to the doctors and sort of like say I've discovered this condition I think I've got it I need your help blah 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 I was like inc I was bullied so heavily because of my legs through my school years and um it, it, it was still such sort of like a embarrassment and I just want to, I never wanted to draw any attention to my legs. Like, say, if, if me and my friends went, uh, I was part of a group of friends who was really into extreme sports, and in the summer we'd go and um, find, like, rock pools and do jumps and things like that into the pool, and I would never, ever, ever, like, show my legs. Even at that stage when they were much smaller than they are now, I was just so uncomfortable and I never wanted to draw any attention to them. So the idea of going into a doctor's, which I never did anyway, I always shied away from any sort of issue like that, but the idea of going there and and bringing up the subject of my legs and, have, and speaking about it was just too, too embarrassing and too much to handle at that time. So I kind of like blocked it out. I didn't really, uh, it was there and over the years I kind of like did a little bit more research about it. Um, and I was always, always in the back of my head and my legs have sort of affected my everyday life 
for the entirety of my life. So it's been it's it's been an issue, but I've just kind of never never raised it, never sort of like felt comfortable to say, hey, you know, my legs are really hurting or whatever, you know, it's just been a constant battle with them really. Um even even with things such as one of my current sort of like loves and hobbies and pastimes is hiking and long distance walking and um it's really difficult to find hiking sort of like clothes to fit me and I need them I need I need the right kit I need waterproof kit otherwise things can get dangerous and dicey and it even affects me to this day I can't get them because of my thighs so you know it's not just about sort of like oh I'd really love to wear a pair of knee-high boots I would but it it's not just about the look of them it's about the constant pain and how they hold me back so yeah I kind of at that age put it on the back burner didn't really think much of it um, I continued to try and lose weight. I sort of naturally sat around the 11 stone mark and no matter what I did, how many gym sessions I did, how much I restricted my calories, it didn't matter, it would not budge. Um, that eventually led on to me having an eating disorder. I was bulimic for many, many years and that was throughout the time that that was happening it was a secret nobody in my family knew my partner at the time didn't know no um it was just a thing that i did i got into the habit of doing it and at the time i didn't realize it was because of the lipedema but now looking back i know it was like the last attempt to try and gain a, a normal body size and to to shrink my legs but um obviously not being able to metabolize the lipidemic fat it didn't help so then I uh, went through a bit of a rough patch in my life and gained five stone was it yes I gained five stone in weight um, over sort of like the last over the last four years and here we are today I'm on my weight loss journey to lose the weight to become the healthiest and fittest version of myself um so I've been on this journey now for six months and I've lost two stone which I'm super proud of it's been a bloody hard struggle but you know I'm I feel like I'm doing well I'm doing my best I'm doing it in a healthy way and I've managed to lose two stone but back in sort of February lipedema popped back into my head and sort of the, it was more through the pain that I was encountering and the bruising and the other things obviously I would love my legs to be smaller I'd be totally lying if I didn't say that but it's, it, it's really not about sort of like the cosmetic look anymore it's more about sort of like my standard of living and it just occurred to me that once and for all after all these years of having this niggle in the back of my head of do you have lipedema is this what you know is going on is this the cause of the pain the bruising the swelling the you know inability to lose the weight and i kind of like just said you know what you deserve it and you, you owe it to yourself to 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 find out either way either way it was a discovery you know I, I either got the answer no you haven't you can go forward with your life and put this to rest or yes you do and then do everything in my power to stop it progressing even further so I obviously the I because I because I'd sort of known about lipedema for years and done prayer research and whatnot I knew it was very sort of un known in the medical sort of like profession doctors don't really know about it and I was already part of a sort of lipedema charity called talk lipedema so I spoke to them and asked for their advice and they sent me over a letter and some information to take along to my doctor 
Uh, so I printed that off, booked a doctor's appointment and went and saw, uh, what wasn't my regular doctor, it was just somebody who could see me that day. I took the information along with me. So I basically just sort of explained as in a nutshell uh, what was going on, my symptoms, how I was feeling, blah, 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 and said, I feel like I could potentially have lipedema have you ever heard of it he hadn't so then i gave him the information and then he you know had a little look on the computer because i'm sure he thought i was completely bonkers and making this all up um so he had a little look it's all on the nhs website um so i was like okay i've never heard of this but it's obviously a recognized condition in the uk um i don't know anything about it from what you're saying it sounds very likely so can I sort of like look into it and get back to you type of thing. So that was totally fine because I already sort of went in with the understanding that he's probably not gonna be able to sort of like talk about lipedema with me. It's probably gonna be a case of I get referred somewhere. So I went away and that evening he gave me a call and said that he's spoken with his colleagues uh, none of them had heard about it and he sort of like researched and that I needed to go to a lymphology however there was nowhere local for him to refer me to so sort of in the nicest possible way said you know I encourage you to go forward with your diagnosis but from here on out I can't really help you so then I was like okay I knew this was gonna be difficult, but I didn't realize I was gonna sort of be left on my own to sort of like find the answers. So I know that there's a, a big, beautiful lipedema community that are so helpful and so wonderful. So my first thought was to go direct to the source, go to them, they are the, you know, the people that have been in my position, they're gonna give me the best advice and inform me better than anybody could really. So I spoke to uh, a girl who's recently been diagnosed and asked her about her diagnosis. And she actually, we had a bit of a similar story and she said, look, I uh, went to a private specialist and she, she helped me with my diagnosis and blah, blah, blah. And then she put me in touch with her and I spoke to her and she gave me the details and names of the specialists around Yorkshire, which is where I live. So then I did my research and had a look and sort of decided which one I wanted to see and then booked my appointment. It was a private appointment. I could have I, I could have pursued the NHS route and continued to go and fight, but right now at this stage I, you know, I was worried that I'd give up on myself and basically go, this is too hard, it's not worth it. And I really, really wanted to once and for all find out. So I had the funds to go private. It cost me £200, the consultation and diagnosis appointment, blah, blah, blah. Um, but for me, health is the most important thing. And if I can invest in that, then I was fortunate, fortunate enough to do so. So I booked my appointment in April for July, which was yesterday, and I went along to see the amazing specialist and he was incredibly helpful. Um, and basically after sort of an in-depth discussion and examination, he examined my sort of body um and then the conclusion was my diagnosis of lipedema type 2 stage 2 and what that essentially means is my lipedema um is from my hips down to my calves because i have some lipomas i think that's the name of them in my calves and uh i also have it on my arms um, oh, one of the one of the symptoms as well. This is really strange, uh, but I've just remembered, so I'll I'll just pop it in here. Is that your skin? You get mottling on your skin. I don't know if you can tell or you can see, but um, this is basically mottling where it's kind of like red and 
you have patches of white. I don't know how well that's going to show up. And also, it's cold to the touch. So if you use the back of your hand and you touch your legs, they're quite cold to the touch. My arms especially are really, really cold. You can't see here because of my tattoos, but obviously, there we go. Um, so, yeah, I mean... It, I only got diagnosed yesterday and I'm still a bit sort of numb from the whole experience and I'm still digesting all the information that I've been told and although I've had my suspicions for a long time, there is a huge difference um, from having a suspicion about it and actually being diagnosed. So yeah, here we are. So I was diagnosed yesterday and like I said, I'm on a weight loss journey. And that's not going to change. Although I now know there's a percentage of, um, let's say, diseased fat in my body that I can't metabolise, I'm still going to do my best to get rid of all of the fat that I can because I still have an element of fat in my body that isn't lipidemic and I can get rid of. Um, what proportion that is, I have no idea, but I'm going to try my best anyway. And it's there's lots and lots and lots and lots of research out there to suggest the best form of diet for lipedema. I don't know that yet because I haven't finished reading about it or looking into it. But um, I'm, I'm in the process of doing that and that's obviously going to affect my sort of plan as such because once I, dis once I discover what the best diet is to sort of like maintain and try and prohibit any sort of further growth I will be adapting my diet around that I think because right now um and this was one of the main reasons that I wanted to go to find out because lipedema is a chronic condition that can get worse you know um there's three stages in total well there's actually I think I think Medically, there's three stages, but in the lipedema community, there's we kind of class as four because lipedema, if untreated and unmanaged, can lead on to lymphedema, and they're two very different conditions but quite similar in some ways. And once you have lymphedema, there is no treatment for that, you just have lymphedema and you can't reverse it. So, um so right now I'm at stage uh, type 2, stage 2 and I don't want to this to progress further because right now, although I have pain and although um, it does affect my daily life, uh, I still have my mobility. I did 30 mile walk over three mountains only a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I still have my fitness, I still have my health, that I've got so much to be thankful for and just grateful that I've discovered my condition at this stage. So I don't want it to progress any further. I wanna do everything in my power to, to help keep myself healthy and mobile because if you, if you go ahead to Google and you um, Google, you know, lipedema stage three you will see the implications that it can have on um on your life so yeah that's the kind of like the main concern here now is making sure that i do the best for my body so that it doesn't progress um so yeah i guess i guess i'm still on my weight loss journey i'm still going to be doing videos of what i eat in a day but it will be adapted somewhat to best suit lipedema. So here we are, it's crazy, it's such a trip. I mean, how do I feel right now? Like I said, I feel quite overwhelmed. Um, there, is a, there is a touch of relief there though, you know, and I mean, I know that might sound wild that I've discovered I have a condition, um, but when you have tried as hard as I've tried, and when you've been subjected to, you know, really horrendous bullying, 
when people don't believe you, don't listen to you. You know, I was sat in a doctor's office after weeks of making myself sick and just the worst sort of like mental anguish possible, trying to explain to them and not having them listen because who's gonna help a fat bulimic person, you know? It, it's just, there's so much more to this condition than, oh, I've got fat legs so much more and i think sort of like knowing now that it's not it's not totally my fault and there's only a certain element of it that i can control it's taken so much pressure off me and it, given me answers to questions that i've spent you know over 10 years trying to figure out so i feel like now i can go forward with my life with this information and understand my condition and go okay it's okay, you know, it's okay. And sort of learn to sort of like forgive myself and love myself and move forward with with life and draw a line in the sand and step over that line and go, I understand now, I, I get it, I understand it and I'm gonna do my best for my body and yeah, just go through this journey and I'm bringing you all along with me because I feel like with lipedema, it's just one of them conditions that there's uh, there's not enough awareness about it, and it's so unfair that women have to be subjected to the fat phobia and the abuse and whatever else it is that they go through. And essentially, if doctors are the medical professionals knew more about it, it's so many issues and medical problems can be alleviated with just that piece of information knowledge is power so if i can do anything to sort of help uh, help the sort of like uh community or uh, build more awareness of it i definitely want to be on board with doing that so i'm going to be sharing my lipide lipedema journey on my channel and if you're watching this video now and you either have lipedema yourself or you know you think you might have it i am going to be creating a special playlist where i'm going to put all my lipedema related content in if you're watching this video and you suspect you have lipedema and you're you know on your journey for diagnosis or you have any questions please 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 reach out to me I'll, i will leave my Instagram link in the description box and also if you don't have Instagram just ask the question on the comment section of this video um, I'll be more than help. I'll be more than happy to help you with any questions um, Because you know it, it is it's one of them things that I've spent I spent far too long Considering like do I have it and I really really wish I'd have pushed myself sooner but there's a reason for everything and here I am now knowing and able to sort of like adapt my life to accommodate it as best as possible. So that's it really, I know it's been a long ramble and there will be obviously more talk of lipedema on my channel. Um, obviously just just to quickly sort of like go over the only real sort of way to get rid of lipidemic fat is with surgery um i haven't fully decided what i'm gonna do about that right now um like i only got diagnosed yesterday so i have to go over the type of surgery options and things like that but just so you know that is the only way to remove lipidemic fat it's not like a cop out it's not um the easy way out it's it's the only way basically it's the only way to remove it so be kind please remember that this is a medical condition it's not you know it, it's not something that somebody's made up to get out of sort of it's not an excuse it's a medical di condition um and it affects one in eight women and the sort of diagnosis is sort of less than 0.1% of women who have it so it's incredibly sort of it's out there in the world and it's crazy that 
medical professionals don't know don't know much about it so yeah it's still in its infancy in terms of being understood and hopefully one day girls won't have to suffer like you know I've done or other people have done to get diagnosed and um, hopefully be able to manage it much sooner but yes that's it for today's video um I don't it's, it's just crazy like I can't believe I'm sat here saying that I've been diagnosed after so long um and you'll just have to forgive my headspace because I'm a little bit all over the place I'm trying to sort of like work my way through it but yeah obviously it's it's a massive thing for me but yeah thank you for watching if you have any questions on lipedema or want to know any further information please let me know um i'll leave some links to some really great resources uh in the description box and until next time guys please stay happy healthy and well bye